I'm going to show you how to record an interview with a guest via Zoom, why I use Zoom, then we'll go into Adobe Audition, get the podcast ready and edited, and finally into a podcast host of your choice, ready to export and upload to Apple Podcasts and also to Spotify. The first thing you want to do is go into the preferences settings of Zoom. There's a few little uh, settings I need you to go through here to make sure your audio is as good as possible, and that's why I use Zoom now as opposed to FaceTime or even Skype, because there's just more settings you can make to make sure your audio is as good as possible. Uh, I was These obviously at the top here speak for themselves. That is just the speaker so you can hear the ringtone and so on. If you've got a different audio device that you want to play the ring through, tone through, that is what that would be for. Whichever your microphone of choice is, my mic is coming through the Scarlett 2i2, and when you've got your mic selected, just make sure you're tickling sort of around about three quarters of the way across. You'll know that's a nice, comfortable volume then. My volume is adjusted out on the desk, but if yours is directly into the Mac, you would adjust the volume there if it's too quiet or too loud. You don't want that ticked, the automatically adjust microphone volume. What that does is artificially raise and quieten your microphone should you move away from your mic at all. And it just sounds very, very artifact. It doesn't sound good at all, so uncheck that. Here you want to go for the lowest setting possible of background noise. Your background noise should be pretty good if you're in a reasonable studio or reasonable environment, so go for the low setting there. On this, you want to have this show in meeting enabled to original sound. That will give you a little green icon in the top left of your screen when you join a Zoom meeting. Obviously, I haven't got a, a Zoom meeting to join right now, but there'll be an icon, a little green icon top left of your screen. Just click original sound. That'll make sure that you're getting your audio across to your guest in as good a sound as possible. And make sure high fidelity music mode is ticked in case you're going to be using music at all. If you're doing a tutorial with somebody, say, in a school or a university, you might want that ticked on for that reason. Automatically join audio. Yep, you don't want to have that embarrassing thing when you know they can't hear you. You're on mute, you're on mute. So automatically join computer with audio when joining a meeting. Those two I always have unticked. Those I leave as I think they're the default settings and they're kind of useful to have. If you're using a headset, then obviously you can use the buttons on the headset there. That's all that means. And in advance, there's only one setting to go through there, and that is the echo cancellation have that set to auto those are the best settings that you can have for your uh, zoom calls knowing that your audio is going to sound as good as it possibly can and all i would also add to that is when you're lining a guest up make sure you're ready for them make sure you're prompt on time to whatever time you set the meeting up i normally log on about five ten minutes before in case they're a few minutes early it's always better for you to be early rather than them to be early or waiting for you. Make sure you've got decent lighting, make sure your background looks clean and professional and just put yourself in a good professional mindset before getting your guest on. The next thing that I need to show you is how to set up an audio interface to take the Zoom call into Audition and that's what I'll get onto now. So the tricky bit here is to get the recording from zoom into audition now there are two things i would suggest here ask your guest if they can record at their end if they can brilliant the space i'm in now with tech people from youtube tends to mean they've got studios set up and can generally generally record but of course the whole idea is you want to make it as easy as possible for your guest so i suggest even if they are recording Record locally at your end as well, just for a backup. You can always delete the track when you're ready, but it's a best practice to record at your end, but ask if they can record too. Maybe give a clap at the start of the session so you can easily line things up when they send you the audio over. Ask them again, if possible, to record in the same format you want. So I would ask them to record in 44100 mono if it's for a podcast and just get them to send the web file over via a file transfer service after the interview. But in order to get the audio into it's like an artificial uh, interface that we're making here an audio interface i use something called loopback and it is super simple it's a great find i'll very quickly show you how i would set a device up you would go on to new device here and you would give it a title which you can simply do in there then to delete blocks you can just delete then you would add in so you would look for your interface which in my case would be the 2i2 and then also I'd look to add in obviously zoom which if it's open at the moment there it is zoom and all you simply do you create two other channels as well and then you just delete that which is by highlighting and delete highlighting delete you've got one and two going into there and you just drag three and four into there and it's as simple as that that is how you create 
the interface ready to use in Adobe Audition. I've already got one set up that I'm using uh, there. That's my Zoom one. I've called it Zoom. And you can see it's exactly what I've told you to do. And that then will give you the option to pick out this audio interface in Audition so you can record your mic and also the guest into separate tracks as a multi-track session so you can EQ them separately once you're ready to start working on the production and the post in the show. So loop back, you need that, set yourself up an interface. So we're now in Adobe Audition and all I've done is opened up a new multi-track mono session. Make sure it's mono because you're only using voice. I've deleted the empty tracks and one thing you need to do before you're ready to start working is go into the preferences and for the audio hardware you want to choose in here your Zoom loopback audio interface that you made as the input. The rest of it can all stay the same and you're now ready to get going in here and what I would tend to do if you know that you're going to be in track one I just call this my name. It's easy when I'm editing that way then whoever the guest would be in the second track and here is where you pick out your audio interface zoom one is you and quite simply zoom three because they're in pairs so one and two effectively is you three and four is the guest and you need to hit record for you and then as you immediately see i've got levels there and you want to have record and monitor for your guests that way you can hear them through your headphones make sure you are wearing headphones and if possible they are wearing headphones and that is how you set yourself up a multi-track session using loopback as an interface to bring the audio from zoom into this session obviously i haven't got a call going at the moment but i can assure you if it was up and running you'd be able to see audio coming in here but these are the important uh, settings to have you as zoom one slash two and the guest in three slash four that was all set up in loop back a moment ago and make sure you're monitoring their input and also make sure you and hopefully they have got headphones on as well right what i'm going to show you now is a session that i did with hartley charlton a couple of weeks ago and show you how things actually work out once you're in a physical works uh, workflow of a podcast so this is the actual audio session that I recorded the interview with Mac Rumors editor Hartley Charlton a couple of weeks ago. You'll find the podcast. It's on Apple Podcasts and Spotify. The top track is my audio. This is the audio that Hartley sent over to me. But here of most interest is the audio that I recorded locally in Zoom just as a backup in case for whatever reason I didn't receive Hartley's audio. So I've just lined it up so it's in the same position and then it's ready to go. Now there's a few things I would always suggest you do if you're using audio from Zoom is I use this uh, NS1 noise reducer from Waves. It's an easy push-pull plug-in and the more you put it up the more noise reduction you get and no matter how good their recordings are if it is a Zoom call recording there is always going to be some background noise in there. Some of this is going to be loud. You can just see there's hiss there. So I would always always use a noise reducer then some EQ, some compression and that will make the zoom track sound as good as possible. Now, as you're aware, I didn't have to use that because I had the original audio sent over from Hartley. If I just delete that track now. Oh, one thing I wanted to show you actually uh, on here, if we pick out say Hartley's track, there's a great little trick which you'll find under diagnostics in Adobe Audition where you can strip silence. So you can go through presets, they've got one for podcasts and you can go through and it will scan and it will put markers in all of here and you can split all or you can delete all. So if you just split all, there you go, it's now ready. You could hit, hit delete and all of the silence is gone. So any background noise that was there in theory should go. And it's pretty good. It's pretty good at the AI. It picks up where the speech is. You can go through and tweak it so it's individually set for every recording. But to be honest, it works pretty well. So the other thing you would do then to get this ready is I would select all of the audio. I've got a shortcut of Z for match clip now to minus 23 to make sure they're at the same audio level. Once you've done that and it runs through, it's a case then of exporting this part out. This is the interview then that is ready. Again, I've got a hotkey that I've got under F and that will now save this session out. I'll save it as a wave and I'll make sure it's 44, 100, 32 bit mono, which is fine. It's going to go wherever you choose for it to go. You can obviously choose the location you're going to put it in. And that then would export your interview out ready just to polish up, put some top tails on, some beds of music and ready to go. So once you've exported that out, which I won't bother doing now because it just take too long, You've got that file, then it's a case of opening yourself up another audio session and I'll show you what to do then. We're almost at the end of it now. 
So this is now the penultimate phase of getting the podcast ready. All I've done here is dragged in the mix down of the interview that we just made. This is my bed of music that I use at the intro and outro, which you've heard I'm sure many times. This is an intro and outro I corded of me just welcoming Hartley onto the show. And again, at the end, thanking for being on the show. I've got music top and tail. I've used essential sounds to mark this as music and I'm going to duck it against speech. You can see I've got a speech bubble there. And I just lined up all the clips I need. And then once I'd finished with the intro here, That's then it was just a case of welcoming Hartley onto the show. So it's a very warm welcome to And that is how everything goes. Make sure once again that everything is mixed down to the same loudness of minus 23. That's important to do here. And right now, when you've got the beginning of your show ready and you can see at the end of the show exactly the same me thanking Hartley and the outro music with ducking on again using the same essential sound technique I just mentioned to you a moment ago you would export that out by selecting all of it as you know I've got the hotkey of F I would then bring that down and you're, this is going to be your podcast file so the important thing now is for size of files and also certainly the Podbean, the podcast host that I use Podbean, like MP3s. So now it's a case of making sure you select MP3, you want the best quality possible, which would be 320, at 44100. You would then export that down. That is going to become your podcast file with only a few more things to do. Seems like a lot of stages, but I hope you're with me. This is how exactly how I produce podcasts ready to go up. We're now at the stage of creating the final, final file that I'm going to use on Podbean, which in turn will go out to... Uh, Apple Podcasts and to Spotify and whichever other platform you want it to go to. So it's very simple now. All you would do here, once the file is in, this is where you want to match the loudness to the final loudness you want it to go out to the host at. So it used to be minus 16, which is why I named the podcast minus 16, but you would just drag your file into here. You would give it the target loudness of whatever you want, which is now minus 14, and you would hit run. That would then make sure this file is already at that loudness. And uh, you would then begin going through, adding in, I normally add my website in here for copyright, but add in all these fields, a date's good, metadata, the more metadata you can add, the better, it will help your podcast get found. And you need to add artwork, which you can do to an MP3 file, not to a WAV file. So just simply wherever you've got your artwork lo located, you go and find it, drag it into there, and that's it then. Once you set the loudness, and you might want to check the loudness as well. Don't forget under amplitude and statistics. Hopefully this should be at minus 14 because I think this is the file that I use to send out to Podbean. Uh, once you're satisfied that you've done everything you want to do, normally take another listen through to it, then you're ready to go. Yeah, it's at minus 14. So that is the file now with all the metadata in your album artwork set ready on your desktop, ready to upload to, in my case, Podbean. This is the final part of the jigsaw, simply uploading your file that you've just created to your uh, podcast host. There are a number out there. I've used Podbean for years, so I carried on using them with this new podcast, Minus 16, and it's simply a case of new episode. You would find the file on your desktop. You would bring it through. It tells you you need to do different characters in there. That's fine. You'll give it a title. You'll give it a description. And then what I always do is schedule it. You can pick the time here and the date here of when you want the podcast to go out. And that's it. You're ready to go. And the only other thing you need to do, certainly in Podbean, if I come out of here and go into the podcast apps, you just choose which podcast apps you want your podcast to be available on. So mine's on the Podbean app. It's on Apple Podcasts. It is a little bit lengthy with podcasts for Apple. For instance, you have to send off the RSS feed, which you get from Podbean. Once Apple approved it, it normally takes about 24 to 48 hours. It goes up on their servers. So they don't ever host the actual physical podcast. You're doing that via your client here and you pay a monthly fee to whoever your host is. Obviously, the more content you've got, the more you have to pay for the storage. So mine goes up onto Amazon, onto Spotify, it goes out onto uh, all of these other ones that I've approached to make sure all the green ticks you can see there, I've made sure that my podcast is available on. And it all goes also, once it's on Apple Podcasts, goes out onto Overcast as well, which I know is a very popular podcast player on iOS devices. And I think it's also on Android as well. So that is it. That is everything you need to know about how to approach a guest, recording a guest, getting the audio in from Zoom into Audition, how to mix and master something in Audition ready for export, how to export the file to minus 14 LUFs to go out to your podcast host. And then 
uploading it via your podcast host, in my case, Podbean here, and sending it out to all the different players. That is it. That's all you need to know. There's a little bit of work involved, but once you get into a workflow, it's not that hard. The main things I would always suggest are ask if your guests can record at their end. Always back up your end as well in Zoom, so you've got that audio. If anything goes wrong, you know you've still got the interview down. Redundancy, save it in two, three, four different locations. I once lost an interview and it's terribly embarrassing, so just make sure for redundancy's sake, you save it in various places. Get some noise reduction on the Zoom call for that background hiss. Make sure you're recording in mono for the voices. And that is it. That's everything you need to know. I hope it's helped. If there's anything else you want to know about how to record and get good sound on your guests for podcasts, then get in touch with me. You know where you can find me. I'm over on Twitter, D Talking Tech. You can email me or go over to the website, which is talkingtechandaudio.com. Hope you enjoyed it, and I'll catch you on the next one.